Today we're going to talk about String and String Builder. Now before we start, if you're following along at home using Visual Studio, I need to check something. Go to Debug Options and then click on Debugging and General. Now there's a thing here that says Enable Address Level Debugging. Make sure that's checked so you can follow along. This enables the memory window, which we're going to use pretty darn extensively. So let's talk about strings. Once you're in an interview, you're going to be asked about the difference between string and string builder. Now, the short answer is that string is immutable. Once you create it, it can't be changed. And string builder is mutable. Once you create it, you can alter it in place. But what does that really mean? Well, let's peek into the memory of a computer. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Annihilation, you know there's a character named Kane. He was one of the soldiers sent into the Shimmer. So I created a string called Kane and I gave it the name my string. Now this right here is a memory window. So you can actually look at your memory as you debug a program. Now if you try to find the memory location by scrolling up and down, you're not gonna find it. If the memory on a 16 gigabyte computer were laid out in the real world and each byte was a meter square, you'd have roughly half the size of Rhode Island to search. So you're dealing with a lot of memory. Luckily, there's a search function. So I'm gonna search for the variable name my string. As you can see right here, there's Kane. Now let's write a function that replaces the K in Kane with a C. So I'm going to drop this function in here. My string replace K with C. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're at the memory location and there's Kane. Now let's replace K with C. Watch what happens. You see this? Kane wasn't actually replaced. A new Kane with a C was created in memory. When you change a string, a new string is created in memory someplace else, and the old string gets abandoned. This is what is meant by immutable. It can't be changed. So what happens with String Builder? So Natalie Portman was another major character. So I created a String Builder called My Built String, and I'm passing it Natalie. Let's see what that looks like in memory. Sure as heck looks a lot different, right? But what's with all this junk here? Well, this is just String Builder reserving space. Let's replace the N with an M. So I created a method that replaces N with M. Look down here and watch what happens. The N is replaced in line with the M. We don't create any more data. It stays in the same buffer. String buffer is mutable. It can mutate just like all the creatures in the movie Annihilation. So what happens in memory when we concatenate a string with String Builder? I'm appending Portman to Natalie. Look over here and see what happens. Portman is appended to Natalie in line. Nothing new is created. So why is this important? Well, if you're processing large chunks of text and you're using string, the computer is constantly going to be finding new areas to put your strings. That can eat up cycles. So string builder might be the way to go because you're doing all the processing in the same memory location. In the real world, don't overthink this and try to optimize your code too much. .NET is pretty forgiving. But in an interview, small strings are fine with string. Large strings need string builder. So here's how I remember this. String kind of rhymes with im, as in immutable. String builder is like the thriller Annihilation, which had a lot of mutations. So string builder is mutable. Good luck on your next interview.